and welcome to Ask Endocrinologists. It's so wonderful to have you with us again today. Um, we'll be talking about Cushing syndrome part two. Today we'll be talking about the diagnosis and treatment of Cushing syndrome. Um, if you want to learn more about the symptoms of Cushing's um, and just an overall overview of cu what Cushing syndrome is, um, please look at uh, part one of this uh, podcast. So we'll start out with the diagnosis of Cushing syndrome, and that will be done by Dr. Grace. Dr. Grace. Thank you, Dr. Hope. And we welcome you all once again. So as Dr. Hope has mentioned, you know, we have dealt a lot with Cushing syndrome part one. So today we wanna to talk about Cushing uh, syndrome diagnosis. How do we diagnose this disease? How do you know that you have Cushing syndrome? So first thing is through the history. When you go to your health care provider, you inform your health care provider about your symptoms and things that you're feeling. And uh, do not forget when you talk to your health care provider, if you are on steroid, either for asthma or for rheumatoid problem or for joint pain, and you've been on the steroid for quite a long time, it's important to let your your health care provider be aware. This is because it guides us in the treatment plan as well. And then the doctor look at you and perform physical examination from head to toe to see if you have those symptoms or those signs rather of cushion. And uh, from there, we proceed into doing blood work uh, or urine test. And uh, we go first with the screening test. We have three major screening tests or three screening tests that we prefer. One of them is one milligram dexamethasone test. And the second is your 24 hour urine of cortisol test. And the third is late night salivary test. These three tests are very dependent on you as patients to make sure you do it correctly. So how do you do the dexamethasone test? It's very simple. What we do is we give you, we prescribe med dexamethasone medication, a one milligram pill for you, and then you take it at around 11 p.m. in the night. That is the night before your blood work. If you are scheduled for blood work, you make sure you don't take the medication until the night before your blood work. So you take the pill at 11 p.m. at night, and then very early in the morning, between 7 and 8 a.m., you go to the lab. They do your blood work, they draw your blood for the cortisol level and also to check your level of the dexamethasone that you have taken. That's one of the tests. The second test is the 24 hour urine test. How do we do this? This sometimes could be cumbersome because it takes a whole 24 hours of your time. And so we always advise when you know you are available at home and you can run through the whole 24 hours. So the the at the lab, they give you a container, a big container where you pee or you, you urinate into. Your first urine for that morning, when you want to start putting your urine in the container, the first 24 hours. So your first urine in that morning, you, you put it in the bathroom. You excrete it out. You don't put it in the container because that is your urine from the night before. And then you use the subsequent urine that you pee, you put them in the container. You, every drop of your urine should go into that container. And then till the next morning, in the morning, when you wake up in the morning, you put your urine there again and until the 24 hours is completed. You take the urine to the lab, they check, they do, they send, they, they, then we test you for the cortisol level in that urine. And then the third one is late night salivary test. This one is also very easy to do. Around 11 p.m. at night, you the uh, we you would have been given a take-home kit uh, that is that is like a stick-like form. So what you do is uh, you make sure 30 minutes before you do the test, you don't chew, you don't eat, you don't brush your teeth, you don't take anything. And then uh, around 11 p.m. before you sleep. You take the, the the stick. Let's say it's something like this, my pen. So you take it and then you put it in your mouth and you leave it there for two minutes and roll it and roll it for two minutes like this. 
and leave it there. And after two minutes, you take it out, depending on the assay. Some assay test, the kits will give you instruction that you have to chew. Some will tell you don't chew, just roll it. So, and then you keep it back in the cup and bring it to the lab the next day for the test. So this is how we test you and screen you if you have the Cushing syndrome. Subsequently, then we do other blood work like uh, your ACTH level, your DHEAS AS level, just to make sure your ACTH level is accurate. And then we proceed into image, like doing CT scan of the brain, CT scan of the abdomen, or whichever part that we are focusing on. So that's how we do the test. And that's how we diagnose you. So I'll give go back to Dr. Oak to talk to us about how do we treat when we finally confirm that you have these cushions. So over to you, Dr. Oak. Thank you, Dr. Grace. Thank you for that wonderful explanation. Um, just one thing I wanted to add for the 24 hour urine, um, just uh, try to remember to keep it in a cool, dry place yes. uh, while you're storing it prior to bringing it into the lab. So thank you. We'll be talking about the treatment or management of Cushing syndrome. Um, so we're going to break it down into uh, four different sections. Um, first, uh, exogenous treatment, um, surgery, radiation, and medications. So exogenous. So one of the most common causes of Cushing syndrome is actually taking medications that cause steroids that increase your steroid level in your blood. So uh, again, as Dr. Grace talked about, your doctor would help you identify what that, which medications those are, and you would either have to decrease or if possible, stop those medications um, so that it would not contribute to the Cushing syndrome. Um, the next treatment is surgery. So if you have, uh, pituitary, meaning in the brain, or adrenal source of the cortisol, the pituitary would be making ACTH, a hormone that stimulates cortisol, and the adrenal gland would be making cortisol itself. Uh, so there are lesions that can make increased amount of cortisol, and that can be treated surgically by removing those lesions. They are uh, commonly called adenomas. Uh, also, radiation is another modality, another way of uh, treating Cushing syndrome, and then medications. So the medications that are used to treat Cushing syndrome are most commonly um, mifepristone. It works by blocking the effect of the cortisol on the tissues. Uh, and uh, pesirotide is another medication that's used. And it works by lowering the amount of ACTH secreted from the tumor, but that usually works on the uh, pituitary source. Um, and there are other medications as well, including ketoconazole um, that your doctor can talk to you about. So those are some of the medications that are used. Um, and some of them have side effects as well um, that we can uh, you can talk more about with your doctor. So you would definitely have to go into what the possible side effects are. Um, but some of them can include tiredness, upset stomach, vomiting, headaches, muscle aches, high blood pressure, and some have more serious um, side effects such as nervous system disease and, and liver side effects. So these are some of the things that we definitely want to talk about um, with your doctor. Thank you, Grace. Back to you. I was very thorough. So uh, take on point for today. Uh, as we've mentioned from the past video and this video as well, uh, everything you need to know about Cushing syndrome. So Cushing syndrome, uh, it's a condition that can happen when you have excess cortisol in your blood for a period, long period of time. And uh, if you have Cushing syndrome, you present with symptoms. And one of the things that can happen when you have Cushing syndrome is your uncontrolled diabetes. If your sugar is uncontrolled, which could be a real one, because sometimes uncontrolled sugar can be because of other things. Now, if, and then if you are gaining so much weight and you're finding it hard to lose the weight and your face is round, you have uh, 
or, or uh, big stomach or fat pad in your neck you feel like everywhere is getting big and uh, this can be a sign that you have cushion now don't ignore the symptoms inform your health care provider so they can test you with all these tests that we have mentioned and uh, confirm that you have this disease or not and when you have when you are informed or you are told that you have the disease you need to make informed decision on uh, what kind of treatment that you are going to go for and the treatment you are you have to do it as uh, recommended so that you can see yourself getting back to yourself and one last thing and uh, which is very important if you are on steroid and you feel like you have this cushion do not attempt to lower the dose of your steroid yourself let your mm. health care provider take care of it this is because it can make you go rapidly into something called adrenal insufficiency and this could be an emergency so please be careful and i hope uh, we all understand cushion now and the, we want you to remember that the more you know the better you are so if you have not uh, subscribed to this channel kindly do so and let us know your thoughts your on the in the comment section and things you want us to do or help you have more and or talk more about like and share with your friends and family and uh, we'll continue from there next time thank you for watching Thank you. Thank you for joining us.